Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volkswagen Golf. The PQ35 platform allows for all-wheel drive, and it was on the Golf R and Golf variant Synchro Station wagons, but regular Golfs, including the GTI, do without it. Four-wheel drive cars are rare. Against the background of hundreds of thousands of front-wheel drive cars, their share is not noticeable at all. But just in case, let us inform you that all-wheel drive is plugged in here with a Haldex clutch. It doesn't differ in any special problems. The 5th generation Haldex 2 clutch has a propeller shaft, driven hydraulic pump and is electronically controlled. A relatively high load on the hydraulics requires regular oil changes, but most of the breakdowns are relatively simple, and failures usually manifest themselves not as a failure of the drive, but as it being turned on at the wrong moment. Front-wheel drive transmissions are simple and reliable. With manual maintenance, all nodes operate for decades. With powerful motors, the CV joint resource is somewhat limited, but this is not a very pressing problem. Five-speed manual gearboxes of the OAF and OA4 series are used with naturally aspired gasoline engines up to 1.6 liters. The resource of these boxes is highly dependent on the style of operation and maintenance. Prolonged slippage, especially in winter, can damage the differential. Breakdowns of bearings and synchronizers are also not uncommon, especially with runs over 200,000 km. In general, when buying a car, the box is worth checking well. At a minimum, check the condition of the oil and listen to the gearbox on the lift. Possibility of small and not very breakdowns in 5 stage is greater. 6-speed manual gearboxes O2Q, OAJ and O2S are noticeably more reliable than 5-speed ones, but they also get torque motors. And if they withstand 122 horsepower 1.4 TSI and 2-liter atmospheric engines with emerging, then they do not cope so well with the torque of 250 nm. Here, too, the differential falls into the risk zone, and bearings mainly suffer on cars with diesel engines. With them, dual-mass flywheels appear at the boxes, which here have a very modest resource. It is necessary to monitor the tapping at the start and driving at low revolutions well. There can be a lot of damage from a collapsed flywheel and you can diagnose a breakdown with a guarantee only by removing the clutch and checking the backlash. Fortunately, these details have already been mastered in the repair. Since usually Golf are found with a 1.6 liter engine, the most favorite automatic transmission is the Icin TF61SC AK09G. The same box can be found with atmospheric 2 liter engines. On the Golf, this box is very overheated due to the use of the standard circuit with a heat exchanger. So, with runs over 100,000 without an oil change, extremely unpleasant surprises are possible. On the other hand, for calm drivers who do not neglect oil changes at least once every 60,000 km, the resource of the box, even without alterating the cooling system, will be large, and typical malfunctions are inexpensive. Box problems are not related to engine power, but to driving style. The degree of oil contamination depends mainly on the temperature and the number of accelerations using the floating blocking of the gas turbine engine. The box has a hard time with those drivers who like to squeeze the last effort out of the 1.6 liter engine and those who operate the car in long traffic jams in city mode. In quiet driving modes on the highway, the oil temperature, even with the not very successful thermostat in the system, doesn't exceed 100 degrees. By the way, removing the thermostat is very easy. It's located in the pipe above the automatic gearbox, next to the gear selector. This procedure takes 10 minutes maximum and the effect is quite significant. The temperature drops on average by 10-20 degrees. ETF doesn't overheat in long traffic jams and the temperature almost never rises above 115-120 degrees. Working with dirty oil wears out the capricious valve well body and affects its body. The box is considered reliable, but in practice it really shows the resource only when a number of conditions and improvements are met. For most owners, a problem-free resource is when 100-150 thousand kilometers, then the box will require repair. True, there is a chance to get by with a relatively inexpensive one. Much less common of the call fee is DSG per selective gearboxes. With 1.4 TSI motors, mostly DQ200, with the very first OAM series. And that means the most problematic one. The same gearbox was installed with 1.6 FSI and 1.6 liter diesel engines. I can only say that these boxes turned out to be extremely unsuccessful. They required the completion of almost all the most important components, from the mechanical part of the mechatronics and the clutch unit, but the design potential was good. As a result of modernizations, the main shortcomings were corrected, but later by 2012-2013. 
and at the moment GSJ, DSJ on the Golf V are, are mostly modernized. But the list of changes is strictly individual and most likely will be a mystery at the time of purchase of the car. Given the high quality diagnostic of this type of automatic transmission, you should not completely abandon the purchase, but the risks are definitely present and they are high. And the price of repairs is often comparable to the price of a car, reaching 30-50% of its cost, so unpleasant surprises are possible. On the other hand, repairs using bypass technologies are not available. The practice of restoring not only the mechanical part but also mechatronics and two mass flywheels has been accumulated. And the clutches are not cheap, but not as much as at the down of the box. Stroner DSG preselective gearboxes of the GQ250 and GQ500 series with wet clutches are rare, either on the sports versions of the GTI Golf R or R32 or with the most powerful 1.4 TSI with double supercharging, while well, paired with 2 liter diesel engines. Initially, their design turned out to be stronger and had fewer problem points. Although it's potentially more vulnerable, these robots have a constantly working mechanical oil pump and the mechatronics operator works with oil, which may contain magnetic wear products. The DQ250 had an external filter on the box around the end of the Golf V release, significantly improving reliability. In earlier versions, you just need to change the oil as often as possible or put a filter in the brake in the cooling system. It is also unsuccessful here, with the same heat exchanger as an automatic transmission icing and with the same ill-fated thermostat. The mechanical part of the transmission can also fail, in addition to the rather early wear of the bearings of the output shaft and the shaft of odd gears, the engagement forks break over time. If the oil was not changed on time, the oil pump also wears out prematurely. The 7-speed DQ500, which was not officially installed on the car, but with which you can nevertheless find it, is a popular swap, significantly more reliable and more resourceful than DQ250. It has a much more stable resource and can go for 300,000 without any particular problems. But this set of troubles is common, and it depends on the load. And just on cars with this automatic transmission, the load is usually high. The relatively low quality of plastic and rubber products, combined with the widespread use of quick couplings on aging machines, creates the preconditions for leaks and numerous replacements of not-so-cheap tubes, hoses and adapters. For Volkswagen engines, overly complex crankcase ventilation systems are also characteristic, which sometimes causes unnecessary trouble. The Volkswagen Golf 5 has a wide engine range. The classics of the genre are, of course, the 812 EA113 H27 engines with a volume of 1.6 liters and 102 horsepower BGU BSE BSF series. These are the simplest and most popular engines for this car. The second most popular place is occupied by, by atmospheric engines with a volume of 1.4 liters of the BCA BUD series. The design is very interesting but stupid. The engine performed well in lighter cars, but it's difficult for it to cope with the Golf 5. Various options for the EA111, 1.4 TSI and 1.6 FSI engines are also found but less often and even less often come across the naturally aspired 2.0 FSI EA113 A27 series engines and its supercharged TSI variants of the same family. There are a lot of cars in the USA with 2.5 BGP BGQ motors, but we don't have them. Harsh exoticism is the VR6 3.2 BUB engine on the Golf R32. Diesel engines are represented by 8 well versions of 1.9 and 2.0 liter engines with pump nozzles of a dozen series. There is even one naturally aspired 2 liter diesel with 75 horsepower in diesel GTI version 2.0 of the engine with a 16 well cylinder head in the most forced versions. In the city, there is no need to complain about the lack of traction even with an automatic gearbox. It is also very, very reliable, primarily due to the simplicity. This motor belongs to the EA113 A27 family, but unlike 20 well engines with a volume of 1.8 and 2.0 liters, it is extremely simplified. The block of the motor is aluminum, the sleeves are cast iron, the simplest timing belt without phase regulators. There is no complicated intake or even EGR. Of the serious drawbacks, I will only know the tendency to cog the piston group, and then, if you do not turn the engine, change the oil every 15,000 or less and pour whatever you get. There are a little more minor flaws. The plastic intake manifold is prone to cracking in several places, and the seals have typically shrinkage point. The thermostat is not too durable, high voltage wires are very thermally loaded. 
and have a short resource. But all of this is expensively eliminated, spare parts are cheap and widely available, and the motor can be repaired at any service. Finding a car with a mileage of over 300,000 and without overhaul is not so difficult, you just need to carefully delve into the blocks in search of a called up mileage. There are also unique placements with runs of more than 500,000 and not yet board block and the original cylinder head. 2 liter engines also belong to the EA113 A27 series, but they have only a block, an oil pump design and part of attachments in common with 1.6 liter engine. The first generation of Volkswagen FSI TFSI engines turned out to be very promising in terms of tuning, but there were enough problems with them in operation. Most of all complaints about atmospheric 150 horsepower engines. Their piston group turned out to be prone to coking and increased cylinder wear, and there are not repair sizes for an atmospheric engine with an aluminum block and thin walled cast iron liners. The cast iron block of 2.0 TFSI supercharged engines is much more convenient to repair, so there is less negative due to the same problems. And the pistons of the supercharged engine coke much less, but their fuel equipment is equally capricious. On these engines, the angles of operation of the direct injection nozzles were not immediately optimized, which caused a strong erosion of oil on one of the cylinder walls in the warm-up mode and made it difficult to start the engine in winter. The timing belt with the face regulator tensioner on the chain drive of the intake camshaft is quite reliable, but the original regulator is expensive and with runs over 200,000 it is capricious. In addition, a long oil channel before it, when the check valve is no longer tight, is empty during machine downtime, which combined with wear of the chain, shoes, spring and tensioner regulator seals can even lead to chain slip. In the timing of early engines, a hydraulic belt tensioner was used, which is also expensive and has a limited resource. If you rarely change it, then the belt tension is weakened and all from the tensioner enters the belt. In later versions of the motor, the tensioner is mechanical and quite reliable. Wear of the injection pump rod and its drive cam also leads to significant costs, but the possibilities of tuning a supercharged 2-liter engine cover all its disadvantages. 230 horsepower are removed from it. On stock iron and the potential of the unit when replacing the turbine allows you to pull out 300-350 horsepower from it, with a solid resource. So the motor turned out to be much more in demand for sports use than its successor, the EA888 series. But atmospheric engines with almost the same design complexity do not have dignity in the form of high power. They simply have nothing to justify a complex design, a number of childhood diseases and an unsuccessful piston group. However, a lot depends on the version of the motor. The AXW and AX engines are noticeably more troublesome than later versions. The number of changes in the design of the later motors is quite large, and in general they are more reliable. But let us note again. Most likely the capricious series of engines have already been either replaced or upgraded to newer versions. Moreover, cars with touch motors usually belong to fans of the model and brand, who service them carefully. The atmospheric motors with a volume of 1.4 liters belong to the EA111 series, but for many it will be a shock to see their timing, unlike the very famous EA111 1.4 TSI and 1.6 FSI 1.6 MPI 16V. These engines have a timing belt. Moreover, with two belts, one of which leads the intake camshaft and the second from it the exhaust. With all the simplicity and oakness of the design, it has enough shortcomings. Its maintainability is somewhat limited, the block is characterized by weak threads. But at the same time, the rumor greatly exaggerates the, the scale of the problem, calling it one-off. Now all the liners and piston groups of overhaul sizes necessary for overhaul are available for, for motors, and in general they lend themselves perfectly to a repair. True, these engines have slightly more reasons for repairs than usual. Another source of headache for owners is the cunning timing mechanism with two belts. The main belt is not too thick, but it can withstand its 60 or even 90,000 km. But a small belt has a bad habit of flaking and breaking at the slightest excess of the replacement interval, all in grass, overheating and over other typical situations during our operation. It is sensitive to dirt, changes in the geometry of parts and simply to wear. In addition, it's quite thin and doesn't cope well with the load. On aging engines, you need to carefully monitor it. It tries to delimitate alone and its remnants can wind up on the pulley of the main timing belt, which will definitely lead to bent valves. Besides, the engine is a bit noisy, and roller pushers do not have a very large resource. If possible, it is worth replacing them with a set of over later versions if extraneous noise appears. 
The later generation EA111 motors with the timing chain drive are well known to all fans of the brand. From the point of view of manufacturability and efficiency, the motors are excellent, with power they are also doing well. Especially since there were options with double supercharging, with a compressor and a turbine. But there are also many disadvantages. The most obvious is an unsuccessful timing chain with a low chain resource, prone to jumps and the slightest weakening, with a very unsuccessful tensioner design that is not fixed with a ratchet. In addition, the pistons, which in the 122 horsepower versions of the 1.4 TSI engines hold more or less well, burn out in the more powerful ones due to the slightest disruption of the fuel system, wear and contamination of the boost system. The naturally inspired 1.6 liter engines of this family also didn't perform well. They have the same problems with the chain and even direct injection was not set up very well. The early versions didn't start well. The wear of the piston group turned out to be significant due to the unsuccessful design of the piston, the landers were out quite intensively and an increased oil appetite is often manifested. Now motors of this series are well mastered in repair, the variants with the new front cover, tensioner and chain are reasonably safe and inexpensive to spare. But as with many other Golf 5 units, it all depends on how much the engine is upgraded. However, in any case, the 1.6 liter 8 valve will be much more reliable. Diesel engines are not common and they are mainly 812 engines with unit injectors. The motors are not bad, but their camshaft are not very durable, there is not very much power and the unit injectors are expensive and rather capricious. The only 16 valve 2 liter diesel engine with unit injectors is extremely rare and this is good. The cylinder head there is downright crystal, it cracks by itself and even with the slightest disruption of the operation of the fuel equipment or the use of high sulfur diesel fuel or additives, it is simply a must. On this information, both the problems of Volkswagen Golf is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments. 